One technique I'm asked a lot about is the technique of writing for drum kit. So let me demonstrate it here. I'm going to start with a blank score and I'm going to add, so if I go to change instruments, I'm going to choose from the rock and pop instruments category here, percussion and drums, drum set, rock. Notice however that there are various different types of drum set and all of these use different sounds. So you can have, if, you, if you're using um, a sound where the, drums, the rock drum set is not the appropriate sound, you have various options there to play with. I'm going to choose drum set rock just for demonstration purposes. Click OK. I'm going to choose 4 4 and I'm going to click create. Don't need the timeline so I can close that down. So we're ready to start adding notes. Now, if you have two drummers in the room, chances are they will want two different types of notation. So there's no right and wrong, there's only different techniques. I'm going to show you both techniques here and you can make a decision for yourself. The first and I believe most popular technique for notating drums uses two voices in Sibelius. And if you haven't already checked out the other video on using multiple voices, I would strongly recommend that you do so now. And then you can come back to this later. But I'm going to start from scratch. I'm going to create one, just one bar of drum kit music up here. It's always good practice to start from the top and work your way down. Start from the top of the stave and work your way down if you're using multiple voices. So I'm going to start by clicking on the quaver. I'm going to put the hi-hat part in first, so we'll start up here. Now Sibelius treats this drum clef as a treble clef. So as far as Sibelius is, con is concerned, that's a G. Did you notice though that there was no sound? I'll do another one. There's no sound. I can type the letter G. There's still no sound. I'm going to hit escape, because that's that done. There is no sound because in the, the drum map that Sibelius uses, that isn't a note. And most drummers would agree that that is not a note that you would see on a drum kit part. If it had a cross head rather than a normal head, then you would be fine. So what we need to do is to change those notes into cross head notes. And we do that by selecting them, clicking on the bar, going to Notations tab, and there's your Note Heads group. And I'm going to choose from there the cross heads. And now, whenever I hit the P button to play, they play. So that's my hi-hat part. I now go back to my keypad. I'm going to choose voice 2. I'm going to now put in my drums. So my bass drum is going to be an F. And notice whenever I put the, the bass drum note in, everything flips. So it all looks the way it should do. Snare drum is there. Let's make it quavers here, and my last crotchet there, and escape to finish. I can now play it, and it plays back properly. If I wanted this note, for example, to be an open hi-hat, I would select it. I would go to the fourth keypad layout here, and this button here, and there's a wee circle above it, and that will now play back as an open hi-hat. Let's have a listen. I could do the same there. So that's how you would put one bar in. What you may then decide you want to do is to select the bar. Remember the letter R will repeat whatever selected immediately after itself. So I could just type R and I get my second bar. I could then, for example, alter that bar. Let's say I don't want that to be open. And I might decide to make this one dotted. So I'll go back to my first keypad layout and put this one as a quaver. There. So it's slightly different. So this is what I believe to be the most popular type of drum notation. However, as I've mentioned, there is another one. So let me show you that using these two bars here. I'm going to make sure I'm back, you're working on voice one. This only uses one voice and all the stems are all joined together. So everything is based around 
the hi hat part. So that's the first one I'm going to put in. So again, up here. But before I put the rest of the notes in, I want to make sure that the bass drum is attached to that. Now I could, if I'm using the mouse, do that. That's fine. But I might not be using the mouse. I might be using the QWERTY method of note input, in which case I would type a G. It gives me the wrong octave, so I would go up an octave, control up the arrow. I then type another G. It's the one closest to it, so it'll give me the one, the correct one now. And to add the snare drum, it's a fifth below, so I would do a shift five. And it adds the interval, the interval below it. And then type another G. Long octave, so it's control up an octave. Add another G. And now for the bass drum, I would do shift nine. And it adds the ninth below it. Type another G, up an octave, type another G, and add the snare drum, shift 5, and then put the last G in, up the octave, and escape to finish. Problem is, all the Gs, which are meant to be crossheads, aren't crossheads. Two ways I could get around this, I could click them using the control key and select them all individually, like so. Or, I can hold down the shift key, and that allows me to what's called rubber band them, which means I can drag a box over them to select them. Then on my notations tab, I can choose the crossheads in the same way as I did before. But for me, the problem now is the stems all point in the wrong direction. So what I'd have to then do, select the whole bar and type X to flip the stems. And that bar will play back correctly as well. So I hit play. I, can, I could then go and add the open hi-hats. I can change the rhythms as I would want to. But for me, this method gives much more flexibility. And it's easier to read as well. But the choice is yours. There is another notational feature that you should be aware of. I'm going to do Control B, which will add some extra bars. I'll do Control B a few times, so I'll get some extra bars to put the following examples into. Let's take this bar here. I'm going to Alt-click to copy it to there. One very popular notation technique on drums is if you're playing the same rhythm for a number of bars, you would have a wee sign here that says to repeat the previous bar. Well, I can do that as well on Sibelius. I can select that bar there. On the keypad, I will go to the fifth keypad layout here and select the sign from there and put it in there. And that will play back correctly. So if I play from there, listen. Which is all very nice. Or if I delete that, if I take those two bars, and alt click them down to there. Because the second bar is different, I can now click on this bar, but go to the fifth keypad layout again and choose the two bar repeat. That'll give me one of those. And again, that will play back properly. And of course, you may have noticed there's also a four bar version as well. So those are the two main techniques involved in writing for drum kit in Sibelius. Mm -hmm.